what the heck? What is that? Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm. We're in the shop today and we're having some fun with our old Massey Ferguson 240 tractor. This thing's got low hours. We're pushing 900 hours, but I bought it with about 400 hours. And we've been missing something the whole time we've had this tractor. What have we been missing? A secondary hydraulic. So this is a valve and a secondary hydraulic and we're gonna install this on our Massey Ferguson 240 tractor. This could double for several models and I think the 135, the model 65, all sorts of them take the same exact critter right here. We're gonna have some fun. There is no video on YouTube that I could possibly find on how to install a secondary hydraulic on a Massey Ferguson tractor like this. So this will be the one and we're gonna wing it and we're gonna have some fun. All right, woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. Afraid of life, times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. All right, guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Welcome to the Stony Ridge. If this is your first time here, please jump in, pound the like button, consider subscribing to the channel. We're building a first generation farm, among other fun things here on the Stony Ridge, here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. What we've got going on right here is an Agco part, and I'll try and scroll that part number across here if I can find it, or leave it down in the video description for you. Just click show more, and there's all kinds of goodies. You can get hats and shirts and all kinds of fun stuff down there, and you'll see a link to our Amazon store. So what we've got going here is the valve section. We're going to show you all the parts first. This is the valve. This valve will mount to the fender right here. This valve will control these plugs where you plug in your secondary hydraulic and this is going to make this tractor a lot more capable. We're going to go over to the front of the tractor and we're going to show you all the rest of the parts and all the goodies that you're going to need for this job. I am not a professional tractor mechanic. I'm a guy working in his shop and I'm going to learn right here along with you guys. So hopefully we find an easy way to do this and it's a simple process and we all learn something together. And if I screw up, oftentimes we all learn that together too. It's a good time. Let's get up to the front. So if you've made it this far in the video, you've got enough oomph about you to consider installing a secondary hydraulic on your own. Again, my first time. So what we're gonna need here, the bolts and nuts that came with this critter were pretty chintzy, kind of substandard. So I got some really strong, I believe these are called grade eight bolts and nuts with nylon locking washers in order to install this thing so it doesn't vibrate loose. Whenever you're working with a tractor or piece of machinery like this, you've always got in the back of your mind, things are shaking loose. The fender was actually loose, so we had to snug down the fender even before we got started. I've got to drill three holes in the fender. So what I have is a 1 8 inch drill bit and Milwaukee drill. And then I have a five, uh, no, a 3 8 inch bit. And this is the good bits. These are the metal bits. I'll post a link to, uh, to that bit kit. This is a DeWalt bit set. I also have a punch and a small ball peen hammer right here. And we also have a ratchet, a 5 8 inch ratchet. And this is the clutch brand. So this is the house brand from um, Northern Tool. So Northern Tool and Equipment. Guys, post a comment. Do you like Northern Tool? It's my favorite store. <laughs> so I replaced all these junky bolts that came with it with nice, I believe, again, they're called grade eight bolts. So they'll last and they'll hold up and they'll do good. The first thing we're gonna do is install the valve section, which is right down here on the top of the transmission and hydraulic area on the tractor. So first thing we gotta do is we have gotta remove the top of this. The top of this little valve area may look different on your tractor. This one already has a valve in place that will pump constant hydraulic flow this way and it dumps it back in right over here. What we wanna do is go ahead and remove that and we're gonna be replacing it with this valve. This is what comes with the kit. Okay, I am not 100% positive which direction we go, but I do believe that our two hydraulic hose lines will be pointed towards the rear of the tractor. So we got a nice clean rag to work with here. We're gonna go ahead and take our 5 8 inch socket and tear into this. There shouldn't be any pressure uh, on this valve area. Just loosen it up and then we'll get them with our hands. Keep a nice clean work area and hang on to everything because we might need it. 
<laughs> again. I'm gonna loosen these up just a little bit, and then I'm gonna take an air duster, just like you use for your computer. If I had my compressor hooked up, I'd just blow it off, but that's handy enough. I'm gonna get all those little paint flakes away from our work area right here. I'm gonna tilt this guy back off of here. There probably is a gasket. Okay, tip it up and back and off of here. And pretty simple, a pretty simple valve set up here. Okay, I'm gonna set it back down and I'm gonna compare it to this guy. And my opinion, my humble opinion is it's gonna go this direction. So we're gonna lift up. We're gonna compare the two, how the holes go in. Yep, okay. So you can see there are two additional holes down here that are not in use. These are the bolt holes, and these are the hydraulic ho holes. That's where the hydraulic fluid came up through this valve, okay? So instead of just having the bolt holes, these two bolt holes and this one valve hole, we actually have these two bolt holes, two more valves, and that valve. And we have O-rings to go in place right here. I can see my fluid's a little bit on the green side, so it may have a little water in it. I don't know, might be worth looking at. Okay, we're gonna take our clean rag and we are gonna start wiping. Wiping this thing off. There were no leaks here before, so I wouldn't anticipate leaks now, but we're gonna go ahead and soak up some of that hydraulic fluid, make sure we get a good seal. There is no gasket between this area. Okay, tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little sanding sponge and I'm gonna gently sand over here, away from those hydraulic holes as best I possibly can. I'm just trying to knock off any debris that might be on there, okay? So be real careful when you do that. And try not to get any debris into your hydraulic system. Next step, we're gonna take out our O-rings. This comes with four O-rings, I guess, in case you drop one. <laughs> uh, who knows? We're gonna put our O-rings in place here. And actually, there'll be an O-ring right here too, so we'll lay one right over top of that. The O-rings don't seem to go in right here as well as they go in right here on this piece. So we're gonna lay the O-rings in their perspective holes right here. And again, there's an extra O-ring. I don't know that that extra O-ring might go right here or around this little valve. So let me look at the other piece and see if it has an O-ring in, inside there. So there is no O-ring up inside there. We're gonna tip this guy forward. These two holes here will line up with these two holes and that hole will line up with that hole. Perfect, perfect fit. We're gonna replace our bolts Take them and put them back in place. I'm gonna wipe them down real good first before I get started. And we'll put them back in place. Now, on the back side of this, there are two hydraulic holes for hydraulic lines to go in. And I've marked these. One of them's marked blue and one of them's marked black. I've also marked the valve that's towards the rear of the tractor. So I know which one goes where. Probably saving myself a good 150 bucks in labor doing this myself. The other one was Rockstar Gorilla type. <laughs> I'm just gonna snug it down nice and tight. There's probably a speck here, guys. Let me know how many foot pounds. So we're back here to the back of the tractor and we've got a couple hydraulic hoses that need to be fitted up. This all came pre-assembled to me uh, from my local Agco dealer and I've got some old crusty nasty Teflon tape on here. So I'm gonna remove that old Teflon tape and I have some fuel rated Teflon tape. Guys, post me a comment. Let me know what I'm doing wrong here. Uh, a lot of folks totally swear against putting Teflon tape on any hydraulic fittings. They always use the liquid Teflon, which would probably be better, but in this case, I don't have it. But I do have fuel rated uh, or oil rate rated uh, Teflon tape. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sound that a cat makes when you hit it with the leaf blower because it's in your shop and it stays in the shop and it poops in the corner. <laughs> oh goodness. I'm just taking a clean rag, making sure I'm getting all my threads clean, taking my fingernail and going in each thread here to make sure that we're clean as a whistle before I assemble this. You want to be pretty obsessive about putting stuff together that's hydraulic because if you don't, you're just gonna be dealing with hydraulic leaks. And when hydraulic leaks happen, next thing you know, you got dust and dirt everywhere and it's just a mess. So do it right the first time 
and hopefully you won't have any problems. I'm gonna tape this up. We're gonna see you guys at the back of the tractor. All these fittings are 11 16 Nice. Consistency. Blue hose. Now I just marked these blue and black just so I could tell the difference. If you've got like white zip ties and black zip ties, it might just help you tell the difference in the two hoses. Now we're to the part that makes most people nervous, drilling a hole in your tractor fender. Don't worry, you can buy these fenders pretty cheap online <laughs> if you have to replace it. Or if you drill a hole in it, just put a bolt in it if you mess up. So don't worry, it's not gonna hurt anything. All right, so our valve is gonna go right up here. We're first gonna secure the hookup point uh, in a safe direction out of the way, and then we'll put our valve up. That way we're not fighting with this and with the control valve at the same time. This again was something I wasn't very impressed with, but we're mounting it right up to where the work light would mount on this tractor. Uh, I was not impressed with the fact that it didn't come with a lock washer. So we're taking this bolt back off slipping a wash, lock washer back on it, and I'm gonna fight it for about three minutes here. <laughs> there it goes, on the ground. I knew it hit the ground. Oh, time to copy the guys from Roadkill. This is your Stony Ridge zip tie moment. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get this guy up here, and we're actually gonna unweight this. So there's a lot of weight from that valve hanging off of this critter. So we're actually gonna slip this up here and zip tie it to the seat, because it's heavy. There we go. Oh. Now, we can drop some more stuff. So we've got a little aluminum mounting bracket point right here. Slide our bolt through. <laughs> I need three hands for this, I really do. Uh, washer, lock washer, and my nut. Post a comment, guys. Tell me what you think. Should, that should have came with a lock washer, I would have thought. I just had to go into my tool shed and find one. Get it about where we want it. Okay. You don't want it pointed up in the air. You kind of want it sloped downward just a little bit so that it's pointed towards the implement and so that water will run out of it instead of pooling up inside of it. So it doesn't have to be perfectly level here, guys. We've got our drill. Again, an eighth inch little bit right here. And our punch, we're gonna go ahead and I mark these with a little X right here. So we'll go ahead and punch them out. Now, I only marked two holes. Once I get those two holes, Positioned appropriately. So you see I've only got two X's, one X here and one X right here. I've only marked for two holes. The other hole is gonna be down this way. First, I'm gonna mount up these two holes and I'm gonna loosen it up, tap it with the punch, take it back off and set that hole right there. Man, be careful, don't hit your tire. Nice. That was our one eighth bit. And this is, I believe I said three eighths. Woohoo! Yeah, watch your tire. Of course I had safety glasses on. <laughs> Be smart, you only get two of these. So again, I wasn't very impressed with the kit that it came with, so I made up my own little kit. We're gonna go ahead and install two bolts one bolt is a little bigger than the other bolts. We're gonna go ahead and slide those through, get this job done. Seat makes for a great workbench. Up, up, and we go. Start with the one that I can't see. On to the next one. Get one nut started. Should be able to let her loose. So on the back side of the fender here, just gonna snug him down. Not real, real tight. Put everything in place like it should be, and then we'll very, very simply run our punch through and mark where our last hole needs to go. 
two would probably be okay. And we also want to think about ergonomics. So this is where the handle is going to be for raising and lowering this valve system. So that's where that is. We have not connected our hoses from the tractor to the valve yet. That'll be the last step. There we go. Got to be kind of skilled. This isn't very long. Didn't get back in there very far. So we'll just loosen up what we just installed and drill out the third hole. Really want to get obsessive. I guess you could go on the back side here and hit it with a little bit of uh, color match spray paint so that it doesn't rust, but <laughs> I doubt it's going to rust through this fender in my lifetime. Okay. We made our little loop. Find our little detent, our little dent right here. Ooh, safety glasses. Where are they? Don't get me safety, Sam. <laughs> oh. Nice. So we'll grab our, again, this is a three-eighths. Yeah, three-eighths. Be careful, don't drill a hole in tractor tire. <laughs> Put our two bolts that we had earlier back in place. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, dropsy. Got the dropsies. Anybody ever get the dropsies? Seem like you can't get anything done for dropping stuff all the time. All three bolts in place loosely. Then we'll snug them down nice and tight. I'm excited, man. This is gonna totally transform this old tractor into a very useful tool. When I bought the tractor, I thought it had the third function valve on it already, but I was wrong. We've had this tractor on the farm I guess about three years now. I bought it from my neighbor, Tony. Very awesome dude. Paid dearly for it because it's only got 400 hours on it, so nice tractor. So we're securely, very securely mounted to our fender. Now we're gonna take our hoses, which we've marked, and this one has an elbow on it. We'll bring it up and get it in position. Once we get these hoses in the proper position, we'll zip tie them uh, to where they won't interfere with anything with the loader arms. But I think we're gonna be done here in just a second. So we've got one hose here, and these are all 11 16 hose connections. Our final hose connection. Before I tighten this down, I wanna make sure that this line does not interfere with my loader arm down here. So we want to make sure we're securely mounted out of the way. There we go. So we got a little rub issue going on right here. We want to make sure we're not going to be bouncing around. So we're going to take an extra heavy duty Mac Daddy zip tie. I'll post a link down the video description. These things are great for your tractor. Long lasting, ultra strong zip ties. Get that all prettied up and in place, nice and snug. And we'll put another one down here just to make sure we're not gonna be twisting and rubbing. Ooh wee, she looking good. <laughs> Looks awesome, man. Uh, the next video in the series is gonna be repairing the sickle bar mower. And we're gonna have to go up and hook up to the sickle bar mower here in just a second. So in the end credits, you're gonna to get to see this thing at work. I'm gonna go ahead and fire the tractor up and make sure everything is good to go. It looks right, it looks tight. I didn't make the hydraulic lines. Had I made the hydraulic lines, it might be a little bit neater right here, but everything is mounted really, really securely. So let's fire up the 240 and see if we get some hydraulic pressure, see if it makes a mess. Oh, I'm excited. Again, that's gonna make this a whole new tractor, man. Uh, cross your fingers, no leaky. We'll fire this guy up and drive on out of here, right up there and get the sickle bar mower. Here we go, contact. Yeah, got a valve on off position. Awesome, so. <laughs> the biggest concern I had was this block, where this block mounts up. 
whether I was going to have sprayage, whether it was going to leak everywhere, but no leaks at all. I can't test it until I plug something up to it. So we're going to ride up and get the implement. The sun is going down in beautiful Appalachia. It is awesome. What a beautiful day, man. It's springtime here on the farm. Whoo, the sun is bright. Everything is greening up nice. The cows are doing great. Everything's doing great. And we'll let you guys know. You should be able to see the sickle bar mower go up and down as soon as we hook up to it. So awesome, guys. We'll see you next time on the farm vlog. I appreciate it. Pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. This is our Massey Ferguson 240, and it's now transformed into a tractor we can use hydraulics with. Rad. See you next time. Woo!